Welcome to part two of making a mandrel for resurfacing brake rotors. We're going to be turning both sides of some brake rotors that I have been given by someone so they can hopefully use them as either backup or later on if their current set of rotors get warped. And the idea is to <clears throat> make two pieces that can press together because I don't have just one big block of material like six inches in diameter, that size round stock. So what I'm doing here is I'm working on the shaft piece. You saw in part one, I worked on the disc or puck piece, which I bored out the center to two and a half inches or about half a thousandth or so under two and a half inches. And so here I have my shaft piece that I'm gonna be pressing into that puck piece later in this video. So I'm going to start off by facing the one end of the shaft piece. And I'm going to be turning it down to, again, about two and a half inches, going for about size for size, or just maybe a tenth or two of a thousandth of an inch over the hole size in the puck piece that I machined in part one. And I'm going to be machining it down about four inches down the length of this piece. This piece I found you know, lay around the shop, wasn't gonna get used for anything. And here's the sprayer in action. You always want some kind of spray, some kind of coolant, some kind of oil when you're machining with your turning tool. I'm taking fairly light cuts, about 50 thousandths of an inch uh, cuts at a time with this turning tool. This was given to me by one of my coworkers and I don't have any replacement cutting tips. I'm, I'm all out, so this has two good sides left, so I just really want to make it last as long as possible. You can see I'm machining down to my Sharpie mark that I made earlier that you show in the video. And I'm just going to keep machining 50 thousandths at a time because my starting size here, this piece was a piece of three inch material. So I'm going to have to take off 500 thousandths, which is half an inch worth of material, a lot of chips to get down to my two and a half inch sizing. And so I'm using the spray we have here in the shop and it's pretty effective. And I'm just gonna keep that consistently on the tool or spraying on the material, which will turn down into the tool as the tool moves horizontally on the lathe, on the way, if you will. So this particular lathe, when I set, when I engage the power feed, it has a little bit of a skip, a very slight little skip or jump to it, if you will. If you were to have your hand on the handle, like I was just lightly resting my hand on the handle at some point just to feel it and I could feel a very slight skip in there I don't know if it's um, that really big thread you see maybe there's some kind of slight wearing out or some type of minor damage to the to that thread along the way but I did notice that the power feed is not smooth and consistent so when I finish my cut my piece actually has very slight groove marks in it all along the way down the length of my shaft that I've been uh, turning down. So you'll see on the very last cut, I end up using oil instead and I take a very, very light cut and it comes out uh, more smooth, not completely uh, a good smooth finish, but good enough for what we're doing here. So at this point, I'm laying down the oil and I have been taking the 50 thousandths cuts at a time, like I said. This one is a 28 thousandths of an inch cut because after this, I only have about 10 more thousandths to go before I get to my finishing size. So I wanna make sure that on my last pass, I'm gonna do my, t I'm gonna feed it in 10 thousandths of an inch, but I'm not gonna take it all the way down the length of, of the shaft. I'm only gonna take it part way and I can actually test fit my puck onto the shaft to make sure that it's not too loose as you see here. So I was, the machine is cutting a slight taper over these four inches, about half a thousandth of an inch is um, of a taper. So it's half an inch of, half of a thousandth of an inch thicker towards, towards the chuck, the part of the shaft that I machine, and then away from the chuck where the, you see the puck spinning on the end of the shaft, it's a half of a thousandth of an inch smaller in diameter there. So that's why I say the machine's cutting a slight taper. And my puck there, I was seeing how far I could actually twist it, 
push it up the length of the shaft before it got too tight and thankfully it did get tight because we don't want it to be loose at all we want we want definitely want a good press fit for when i go to flip it around and grab it by the two and a half inch uh, diameter machine part of the shaft because the other part of the shaft will turn down and it will kind of boss nicely into our brake rotor so now that i know it's cutting a slight taper I will take that into account and I will make sure that I will go for just a half a thousandth of an inch under two and a half, as you see here on the mics, towards that end of the shaft closer to the chuck. That's where I want to end up. I don't care if the shaft to the right is a little bit, a little bit less, maybe one or two thousandths under two and a half inches because that's not where the puck will be pressed onto. It's gonna be pressed all the way up against this shoulder that I've created towards the bit of the shaft that's closest to the chuck. So I'm taking my very last pass here. I've measured so many times being uber careful that this is gonna be the final cut and that I'm not gonna go beyond the size that I've been trying to machine to. And any time I do machine down half or a partial amount of the length of shaft for my finishing cut, because I'm trying to go for that size, when I only do part of the shaft, I'll actually just run the tool directly over to the right. I won't feed the dial out. I'll just, if the tool, you know, grazes the material slightly, that's fine, because I don't want to change my setting how far I fed the tool in to the material. So I'll just feed it out to the right if I've only machined about an inch in or a half inch in to my shaft for the finishing size. And I'll either, I'll check with the mic, I'll check with the material I'm gonna press on. And then if everything looks good, then I'll just start to lathe back up and run the tool right back across and, and engage the power feed. And it might, you know, cause a little bit of a not smooth finish on the right part of that length of shaft, but that's fine because again, it's that part of the shaft we want to make sure is is good on size and smooth up against the shoulder that we have created. So now we're going to go over to the manual press, and as you're going to see, it's not going to work. This one here, I can you see I can start it. It's got a pretty nice drop-in fit going in, but then it stops because of what that taper that we discussed. It's a, it's a very very slight taper, but it does come down to these tenths of a thousandth of an inch, and. On the manual press, because the table is so flimsy, just, you know, wood and some thin piece of metal, I actually have to take it over to the hydraulic press. So hit, listen in for some sounds of the hydraulic press now. And that's a satisfying press as it went right up against the shoulder. I actually had to, I didn't, I still don't have a radius tool, but with my turning tool, I kind of, at the very up against the shoulder, uh, I fed the tool slightly in to the shaft, right up against the shoulder, just past my size, and then cranked the, the turning tool slightly into the shoulder and then out so I could make sure the shoulder was nice and flat. And because I kind of radiused in with my turning tool into that, that corner of the shoulder and my size, final size of the shaft up in that, that spot, I was able to make sure that my puck was able to press on and sit up against that shoulder all the way and there would not be any slight gap. So I know that's flat up against it. And now I'm going to just take a very light cut on the outside, the o OD, outside diameter of my puck because I noticed when I laid it in the brake rotors that I'm going to be re resurfacing, it's it's just barely not sitting dr completely flat on some of them. So I'm just going to take a light 15,000th cut here just to make sure there's some clearance for the puck to sit in to the, uh, the brake rotor where it's going to end up sitting. And that's going to do it for part two. In part three, this other side of the shaft, I'm going to machine down for the size to boss in not a press fit but just to boss in nicely and just kind of be a more of a slide fit for the 
outside hole of the brake rotors. And that way you can slide up on that hole and the brake rotor can be centered pretty, pretty closely up onto the puck. And then I can line up my holes for drilling and tapping and then bolt the brake rotor to the puck and then get going from there and actually get to re to resurfacing these warp rotors. So thank you for watching part three coming soon.